This box contains every World War II Axis Army soldier. And here they are displayed out. Everything from the Africa Corps to Panzer Grenadiers to the Hungarian Army, the Japanese Army, the Finnish Army, the Romanian Army. They're all here and they're all in tip top fighting shape. And let's skirt a tank on in there too for good measure. Now over here I have purchased all the supplies needed to make every allied army in World War II out of Lego. And then we're going to make a small mock with every Axis army fighting every allied army. If you guys missed the video where I made every Axis army in Lego, I'd recommend going and checking that out first. But without further ado, we'll get into this video here. If you guys do enjoy, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and there will be a giveaway at the end of this video, of course. Now for a quick word from our sponsor. What's up gamers? I'm here to tell you about Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is an amazing place where you can get some fire deals on all sorts of video games. Uh, seriously, it's like 60 to 95% off as you can see here. Uh, these are all of the Star Wars titles they have. They literally have every Star Wars title. Uh, you can also get XCOM here, Men of War Assault Squad 2, all of the games I play on the channel you can buy here for extremely cheap prices. If you use my affiliate link in the description, it helps me out a ton so thank you guys for listening to this sponsorship and thank you to instant gaming for continuing to sponsor the channel starting us off with our allied powers we're going to be having a standard u.s rifleman soldier right here uh, now these guys of course weren't in the war for all that long they joined uh, pretty late after pearl harbor uh happened and so you know they didn't see as much combat as like the british expeditionary force or anything like that but they of course had a pretty big impact on the war helping to finish it off and make sure that they got a total and unconditional surrender out of their enemies and of course we have to lead the recruits of the u.s army with a U.S. Captain. It's basically just the same soldier, uh, but with an increased rank and a little bit more detail on this thing. We also have ourselves a U.S. Heavy Machine Gunner right here with a 50 cal. The 50 cal saw a lot of use during the war when the Americans joined up. Of course, it did see some use before the Americans joined the war as well because of things like the Lend-Lease Act. So a lot of allied nations had access to U.S. gear before they officially joined the war. And as you can see, this soldier does have uh, some 50 caliber machine gun bullets surrounding his neck right there in a bandolier. Now, I do have those more realistic soldiers from United Bricks, but then I do have more of these uh, less realistic soldiers right here. These guys are more in your classic yellow, which I think is pretty cool to see like the classic yellow minifigures in war form. But of course, some people prefer the more realistic ones. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Do you prefer the more realistic ones or do you like the classic yellow? I think both are aesthetically very, very nice. But but these are just sort of similar soldiers, but in a different context. Going back to realistic soldiers, we have ourselves a U.S. Airborne soldier. These U.S. Airborne soldiers uh, saw a decent amount of fighting, especially in the Battle of Normandy. They, of course, famously went ahead and shredded parts of the German army in a night raid the day before D-Day, taking out flak guns and artillery positions wherever they could to make the D-Day landings easier. I do have some yellow versions of the airborne troopers as well. They have better pants. Uh, some of them have watches to calibrate their jumps and, of course, jump packs too. So. Just the yellow variants are gonna pop up every once in a while in this video. I do, of course, want to include uh, some Pacific Theater soldiers here. Some of the US Marines uh, that fought in the Pacific Theater saw some of the hardest fighting in all of World War II against a determined and deadly em enemy of the Japanese. Uh, so these guys are, of course, very cool to include. I sadly couldn't get any of the realistic looking ones, but I was able to get two of these uh, yellow variants here. I've also got a US Ranger right Right here, uh, a member of the US fighting force that fought in the Battle of the Bulge or like the Arden Forest, if you want to call it the Battle of the Arden. Uh, this guy is probably one of my favorite minifigures I own right now. Just the detail on this dude, and he was also very hardened. I mean, in combat, dude, Battle of the Bulge was absolutely brutal, horrible weather conditions, and horrible fighting that had to ensue. And these guys managed to hold out uh, pretty decently against an overwhelming German force. Then to 
round off the US Army here, we have what I would call peripheral units. Uh, so like we have ourselves a, a US engineer right here. He's got like a little engineer backpack, some shovel pickaxe. We've also got a US Admiral right here who might control a fleet, a US military police officer, and finally a uh, US trooper who would be piloting the US LCVP Higgins boats. So that concludes the US Army portion right here. Uh, it's probably the most detailed portion next to the British, just because this is where most of the figures are available. In the US uh, armies, there, there's so many available online, and when you get into smaller armies like France, it gets a lot harder to find minifigures for them. So the US is very detailed, others maybe not as much. The next army that we're checking out probably saw some of the worst fighting of the war, and that is going to be the Chinese army here, or the National Army. These guys were there from the very beginning of the war fighting against the Japanese invasion of their homeland, and uh, the Japanese were ruthless, to say the very least. Uh, they did some very infamous things uh, that were horrid. And so, uh, you know, the Chinese definitely needed representation in this video for all that they suffered, and also for their warriors who fought against an enemy that they knew would show them no mercy if they got captured. These were actually for sale on eBay, strangely enough. This is the only Chinese minifigures I could find from World War II, uh, and they are decals. They're not prints, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer, uh, but hey, they're pretty decent decals, I will say, and they look very, very cool. So I'm pretty happy about getting these guys right here for the Chinese National Army. Next up, we got the good old British boys. Yeah, this is just a standard British soldier uh, who was involved on the Western Front. And in fact, these are the uniforms that you might see at the very early starts of the war uh, with like the evacuation of Dunkirk, and they utilize them mainly throughout the entirety of the war as well, so when they return to. And of course, we've got a counterpart for that standard rifleman with an African soldier right here. Uh, well, sorry, a soldier that would have fought in the African campaign under General Montgomery. Uh, this guy, of course, saw some brutal fighting in areas like Tobruk. This man saw some brutal fighting in Normandy. But they fought for the same army. I do have a couple of British commandos right here as well. The British commandos were responsible for a lot of different sabotage missions during the war, and they took out many German officers by dropping commandos just like this behind enemy lines uh, to kill officers, destroy bridges, things like that. They were they were pretty well trained. Next up, I was really pleasantly surprised to find this figure right here. This is a Gurkha. Uh, so of course, they fought under the British Army, I believe, um, but they were natives of Nepal and were fearless, fearless warriors. Um, and then they've got their, of course, traditional sword, or I'm not sure if you call it a knife right there, but uh, pretty cool right here uh, to see this representation. There was some other natives, I suppose you could say, colonized people that, uh, of course, were in World War II as well and fought under the British Army that I really, really wanted to include, particularly like the Maori, but I just couldn't find them available anywhere. It's really a shame that most minifigures are just German, US forces or Russian forces. It's even rare to find like France and stuff like that, but we will see some of them in later parts of this video. So yeah, I would love to see more representation uh, because they're cool figures. I would buy them, dude. I think a lot of people would, but uh, they're just really hard to find. We do have the Australians right here who fought under the British as well. Uh, for some reason, they sent me this head of like a dead dude. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why they sent that with my order, but I guess it's kind of cool. It almost looks out of, it's out of Call of Duty Zombies, so I stuck it on this Australian guy. Um, but yeah, this is the Australian uniform right here, and I gave him a nice little hat right there. Again, I really wanted to get some New Zealand fighters as well as like the Maori in here too, um, but it's, it's good to at least have Australian representation and Gurkha representation. And once again, let's get into sort of the peripherals of this army. So we have a British sapper right here, or engineer if you want to call him that. Then we have a British British RAF pilot right here, and this guy is super detailed. The RAF being some of the most fearless pilots of all of World War II and really held on to the island of Britain for as long as they possibly could. Then we have a British Admiral right here. And that's gonna sort of round off the British entries for this video. Next up is going to be sort of the last of the major factions, and that's of course going to be the Soviet Union right here. So starting ourselves off, we do have a standard Soviet soldier, rifleman with a Mosin Nagant right here. Soviets
Blitz had a really, really raw deal in World War II. They were often undersupplied in horrible winter's conditions, fighting an army that absolutely hated communism and the Soviet people. And so they committed a lot of war atrocities against the Soviets. The Soviets, of course, got payback a little bit later. And I'm not sure if that was necessary, the war crimes they did to go eye for eye with the German war crimes, but uh, you know, whatever. Either way, here's a standard Soviet soldier, and then we do have a uh, winter variant of that, so he's got some snow on his boots, and he's also got a lot heavier of coats on uh, to make sure that he's nice and warm during the brutal Soviet winter cold. Then, last but not least for the Soviets, we do have an official Lego product. Now, uh, this is from Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull, which I believe takes place in the 50s? I want to say. Yes, I just googled it. It's 1957. And so this guy is a little bit younger than World War II, but I always imagine that this is pretty close to a World War II uniform, uh, an officer's uniform. Of course, one that had not seen really any kind of combat. This is like an at-home uh, uniform. Uh, but even though it's not accurate, I, I still thought I'd include it because I think it's just so fascinating when LEGO makes war minifigures. Now, the last four nations that we have right here are going to be minor nations or nations that were sort of knocked out of the war very, very early. But I still think that they deserve representation and are fascinating. Starting ourselves off is France. And it took me forever to find a French minifigure for this video. And here we have a The Minifig Co. French soldier right here along with a Brick Arms French helmet, so we managed to scramble one together. And this is actually supposed to be an officer, and he does have a back head, rip rip potato chip. But of course, uh, French uniforms were pretty much the uniforms from World War I, just transferred over to World War II, and of course their tactics, like the Maginot Line, were also from World War I, and they just were not ready for the advancements that the Germans had made. Similarly to that, we have the Belgians here, who also basically had the same World War I uniform that they used in the beginning of World War II. Of course, a lot of these uniforms in late World War II, Belgian soldiers and French soldiers, etc., etc., all those minor nations uh, would just sort of get uniforms and equipment from the US, the British, the Soviets, and so the weapons, uniforms, etc., uh, would basically be similar at that point to the United States or the British, except with different patches on them. Uh, so these are the early war uniforms for these when they're more unique to to their country before they sort of just took whatever they could get from the allied nations that they were allied with. Then we've of course got another nation that was really screwed over by its location and that's Poland right here. Again, another uniform that's from very early war, uh, but this is a Polish soldier right here, uh, looking spiffy. Um, you know, they fought very hard, but at the end of the day, they just were no match for the German war machine and the Russian war machine. Poland kind of got screwed, but um, you know, you can't have World War II allied powers without Poland. And the last minifig, but certainly not the least, is a Greek minifig that I have right here. Now, the Greeks were very interesting. Um, they fought primarily the Italian and they did such a good job of defeating the Italian army, although the Italian army was a little bit garbage, but they did such a good job fighting the Italians that Germany had to send an entire another army just to help the Italians fight the Greeks. Uh, so the Greeks were really, really good fighters in World War II and did a bang up job. Here are all of the World War II allied minifigures that I managed to create or purchase online. Now, I wish of course that I was able to include literally every single allied nation, but again, a lot of their uniforms are extremely similar and a lot of them no one makes them or anything that looks similar to them at all so I couldn't get literally every single allied nation and there's a lot more allied nations than Axis nations so now we're gonna take this allied army and we're gonna go ahead and spread it across this little base plate right here along with the Axis powers and we're going to have the allied powers basically fighting against the Axis powers on a base plate and we're gonna try and make it a bit of a mock I'll add some structures and stuff like that but of course, uh, you know, it's not, this video wasn't about the mock, it was primarily about the minifigures and showing off the armies, but I think it would still be cool to just go ahead and have the two sides fighting each other. I think that would look sick, so why don't we go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back with a mock. Okay, I lied. This is not the mock. I wanted to show off uh, some weapons actually that I got real quick. I bought a ton of explosive brick arms weapons. We're talking bazookas, grenades, uh, artillery shells, the whole shebang. I also bought a whole lot of 
brick arms, World War II weapons. There are some modern weapons in here as well. And I thought it'd be kind of just cool to show you guys this huge brick arms pile that I bought right here. I bought it all from eBay for just $17. Used brick arms stuff on eBay is really cheap. Pro tip. But yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and build the mock. And here we finally do have the mock. The Axis powers have way less soldiers, but over here we have the Romanians, Hungarians, and the Finnish charging forward uh, behind a Luftwaffe soldier, and uh, some US soldiers in a Willys Jeep coming after them. Over this way, we have a Gurkha stabbing a North African soldier, and over this way, the uh, Chinese are getting some revenge on uh, some Japanese soldiers over this way. We do have a Panzer rolling on in, and the Luftwaffe decided to go ahead and, uh, you know, take a little seat behind him there too. Over this way, we have a Panzer Grenadier uh, firing as, uh, you know, more U.S. soldiers charge him. Over here, we have the four minor nations: the Belgians, the Poland, uh, the Poland, the Polish, the French, and the Greek. Over this way, sort of charging forward together as a unit. Uh, we got the Soviets behind a tank trap over this way, fighting uh, against the Panzer Grand and some other German soldiers. And then over this way, we've got all the British charging forward against these uh, German North African soldiers. And finally, way back here, we have the US soldiers coming in very, very late to the war, just like the actual war itself. <laughs> So here's our mini mock and uh, all of the nations of the Axis powers and all of the nations of the Allied powers fighting against each other in one big bloodbath. Either way, guys, that is going to be about it for today's video. I really appreciate y'all watching. Now let's go ahead and get on into the giveaway. For today's giveaway, I'm gonna be giving away two American soldiers, one Chinese soldier and a Japanese soldier right there, as well as a bundle of World War II weapons for you guys. So all you gotta do to enter in to win is hit the like button, subscribe with notifications on, and comment down below the best army from World War II, your favorite army from World War II. It could be based on their uniforms, what they did in the war, anything. It could even be your home nation. Just comment that down below and you'll be entered in to win. Per usual, thank you to all of my channel members. If you want to join the daily gang and get your name written on the Assault on Hoth right here, all you got to do is go in the link in the description and press join or click the join button right next to the subscribe button. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.